Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and this is part two of my review of the Benro geared tripod head. Now in my last uh, video where I gave the full review, which by the way if you haven't seen that and you want to catch up on that and see that first, there's a, a link up here and you can go watch that first and return to here if you'd like. But here what I want to do is expand on a few things from some feedback that I got where I didn't explain some things quite as well as perhaps I should have, in particular on on some of the mounting options that you have using the uh, the Benro geared head. Uh, so there's a little bit of a difference here on what you can do with this if you're used to standard tripod heads. And there's also some downfalls. In particular, we uh, had to relate to that bubble level, not being able to see that, and also some safety issues regarding the different mounting options that you have. So let's take a closer look at the various options that we have for mounting the camera, and then some of the positive and minuses that come along with each one. So as I showed in the last video, I used kind of an older fashioned uh, tripod head mounting option, which is pointing the camera directly forward in relationship to the rails. If I take the camera off here, you can see what I'm talking about a little bit better. And of course, this is the rail going this way with, the, uh, with this Arca Swiss mount. And so typically you would slide in you know, your camera this way. And that's something that I've been more used to. And one of the main reasons being is that as you're mounting this in this direction, you can see either side of the mount to make sure that you're actually in there. If you weren't, if you can't see that, then you know, slightly being off, it might catch because it has the Arca Swiss dovetail, which I'll get to in a minute with some other problems with mounting options. But with that then, with the problem, even though this is the safest option because you do see the, uh, the rails on both sides, you have control the knob you can see that you're not reaching underneath of anything but it does cover up the bubble display which on the Ben row is on the opposite side so it's over here which isn't a deal breaker it's not the most uh, accurate bubble level to begin with and as I showed in the uh, in the last review then of course I would typically use the live view display and on the live view display I would typically use then the virtual horizon so if I already use the virtual horizon here I can then see well do I need to be level do I need to change my uh, my verticals and all that so I find that to be more accurate anyways and that is one option but but there are two other options, and there's one that's more commonly used uh, nowadays with this particular uh, head and some others as well, and I want to be able to show that next. So this is option number two, and it seems to be one that a lot more people are using nowadays. Um, I can see the advantage of doing this, because it will show the bubble level right as you're facing the camera. Now, if you look at what I've done, I'm gonna disconnect the camera, and then this will also be able to show some of the downfalls. If you notice, I have to reach around and grab that knob. But instead of where before the rail was facing this way, and I slid the camera in, you can see that I've taken the plate turned it 90 degrees and now it's perpendicular with the camera bottom or parallel depending on how you look at it. And the, uh, the, what we have now is a basic 90 degree turn of the tripod itself. What that does, I have to get this out all the way <clears throat> so I can mount it back in there, is it requires that you put the camera into the mount and you can't see the handle. So for me, that's a bit of a safety issue, but I do see the advantage of doing this and it's definitely an option. And there are some great advantages to doing this as well and I'll show some of those. But to mount this then, once again, having the plate turn that direction, you do have to you know, make sure that it goes into the dovetail, make sure that it does sit fine and of course, if you're like me and you have to wear uh, bifocals or trifocals, progressive lenses, of course that becomes harder. Once you're there and you do have that tight, one of the things that uh, I would recommend is making sure that you can lift the whole mechanism like that, making sure that it is mounted very securely. So anyways, once that's in there, now you can see the bubble level down here. So if you were to combine that with then the, uh, the live view display on the back of the camera, you've got kind of the best of both worlds. You can then see what uh, the tripod head bubble level is helping you with to maybe get some course correction, and then you can get more fine tune uh, for all of your geometry using then the live screen display, or one or the other, or both, doesn't really matter. So with this though does come another advantage, and that comes with L brackets and I want to get to that in just a second but before doing that I want to show another option and then we'll return to that. 
So this is the third option for mounting. Now, <laughs> there could be others that, uh, that I'm not seeing here, but this is definitely one where I've seen a lot of other people do this, and it does make a lot of sense for a couple things. I wanna be able to show that next. What we have here is we still have the plate turned uh, with it being parallel to the camera, uh, perpendicular to the lens. And, but instead of having the knob that was hidden before behind the camera, we have it turned around so now that you have the knob here. This allows you a safer assembly. Once again, like I showed in the last video and in the first setup here, which would be the old fashioned standard tripod method of sliding directly into the rail, even though we're now uh, perpendicular to the rail, we have a better chance of seeing where we're mounting. Another thing that you can do is you can then loosen up and if you needed to make small adjustments with the camera, you could, you could slide it back and forth. Which by the way, one of the things I pointed out with the ball head having a pin in my last review, um, this does have, if you're using the Benro plate, it does have a pin on it, but once you take the plate off, there is no pin on the tripod head itself. So if you use Arca, other Arca Swiss plates that don't have these little screw pins in here that are helping you stop within these grooves from possibly falling off the camera, depending on how you tilt it, then you will have a problem. That's one thing I didn't have a problem with the ball head um, having that, uh, that pin in there. Anyways, going back to this mount, it's a lot easier to put in. I can see where I am. I have a better assurance of getting myself mounted into the rail. And of course, then I can just tighten that up. And I can see here that I did tighten that up. Still have to look on the other side for safety safety factor and of course it's a good idea to to lift it a little bit and make sure that that is is all securely on the uh, the tripod but having it in this position there's still yet another advantage now there are some problems using L plates with that, that's the next topic, but this right here, since I have this mounted, I can show you, you can overcome that with tilting this sideways. Now, if you do have this perpendicular type of setup, um, either this direction or like I showed on the last where the knob would be hidden um, underneath of the lens so you can see the bubble level, either way, by using this particular adjustment over here, you can use the coarse turn knob and bring that all the way over to the side. So that does have a limit on how far it can go and that's fine. And it's out of, uh, you can't see it here, but of course the other knob is over here um, for the other direction. So I am able to change my verticals with this knob. So if I wanted to shoot vertical, that's fine. My virtual horizon's working well. There's not much motion you're gonna get out of this one on the side, which is gonna be your horizontal tilt. And that's of course because it's stopping up against this. If you used an L bracket, you wouldn't have to worry about that. I have had in situations like this, when I've used something similar on a ball head, I've just adjusted the tripod legs if I didn't really have it that well. And then of course here we have our pan for the other direction. So instead of using an L plate, this is one option. And once again, it's that uh, the clutch release, that coarse adjustment wheel. You just turn that and then you can bring it uh, up to what you want to do. But this is an alternative then to using the uh, an L plate or an L bracket. And I want to show you some of the problems that you can encounter using the Benro with an L bracket. So taking the camera off, we can see how an L bracket might be used on here. And I wanted to do that to show an L bracket itself. Now, if you're not familiar with an L bracket, it's basically this little doodad that would sit on top of a tripod head. And here I've got that uh, Sarui uh, ball head that I do like to use on uh, quite a few shoots. And for the reasons I've mentioned uh, before in the last video and obviously in the interiors book as well. But uh, you can see this is held on very tight. It's just another type of Arca Swiss mount. And that goes on just fine what you would do then is when you want to turn your camera vertically, the camera would be mounted on this. This would be on the side of it. You could just take it and you turn the plate 90 degrees and you put it back into the plate and everything's fine. You tighten it all up. But there's a problem though with how the Arca Swiss manufacturing of this particular Benro head deals with that. So they had a problem with the dovetail and that's the, uh, the distance uh, of the dovetail, I should say. The dovetail is the 45 degree cutout uh, that they have that uh, allows the clamping mechanism to grab hold of it. Well, with the uh, the Benro, unlike a lot of other uh, type of uh, Arca Swiss mounts, they have a gap um, from the very bottom of the plate to where the dovetail starts. And so when you take some of these L brackets, like this one happens to be a Sunway photo, it's got a very thin uh, bottom plate. 
So when you've got a high gap on a, uh, the bend row, on the uh, clamp mount here and a thin plate here, you've got a problem. So sure, you could mount this in there, especially my important part, I'd want to go vertical. So my camera would be vertical on this and I'd tighten that up there and it looks like it's in there, but it's not. It just moves back and forth. If they would have manufactured that gap just a little bit lower or taken the angle of their dovetail portion of their clamp and extended that all the way down instead of leaving the gap, you wouldn't have this issue. Don't have a problem using this L bracket on just about any other head. But on the Benro, that is an issue. It doesn't mean that all L brackets will have a problem with that. It just uh, Sunway Photo is known for having kind of a thinner plate on here. Unfortunately, Arca Swiss isn't a complete standard when it comes to measurements. They do have the dovetail, the width, that type of thing, but they don't include the gap that's at the bottom or the thinness of the plate. So no matter how you want to mount on top of the Benro geared tripod head, you really can't go wrong. There's no right way or wrong way. In fact, Benro doesn't even specify how to mount the camera itself. They just show how to mount the plate. If you Google around, you'll also find a whole lot of different options. A lot of people do use this method here. And of course, there are others that use the more standard method, especially if you're using a telephoto lens and they've got the, uh, the collar on it. So you've got that mount. Sometimes that's more uh, common to use the standard mount. But if you do want to use the bubble level, then of course you can turn it this way. But remember, it's really a matter of the safety involved with it and how comfortable you are with mounting it. So if you want the highest degree of safety, you're going to have the least amount of flexibility out of the tripod head. And of course, that would be as I showed as option number one here and also in the last video where the camera was slid in the traditional sense into the rails. So it, it was parallel with the rails. Having it perpendicular to the rail here, the camera, you do have a lot more flexibility with being able to see the bubble level here and then we can get by without using an L bracket. Option one still allows you to get by without an L bracket. It doesn't have as much flexibility with some of the movement though with it. And option number three where the knob, instead of being hidden back here, which then you have to get around and try to, uh, to finagle and loosen that up, it can be a little bit awkward, something that you might have to get used to, but does give you a high degree of safety but yet loses the flexibility flexibility of seeing that bubble level. But if you're using some other type of leveling mechanism, whether it's a excuse me, a bubble level that might be in your hot shoe on top of your trigger. It might be something that uh, is just using, for instance, the live view inside of the display. Then using the bubble level really isn't that important. And uh, so it really depends on how far you want to go with that. And once again, to wrap up on L brackets, I know that a lot of people love using L brackets. I haven't really been a big fan of that. I'm not discounting that whole thing, but there are some issues with how the Ben Row has manufactured their dovetail portion of the clamp for the Arca Swiss which doesn't allow for the thinner plates for some of those L brackets and possibly other mounts as well. So something just to be aware of um, with that also. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the Benro. Once again though, just like in the last video, I would still give this eight out of 10 stars. And this really is more a matter of preference and how you feel that you should use it. it. Does provide a lot of flexibility and it is a really good geared tripod head. Anyways, I hope this and the last review was very useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.